Alright, um, this is a quick video just for anyone who's having trouble with uh, enabling XMP or DOCP in your BIOS and uh, specifically when you, if you unplug your PC or switch it off from the power supply then when you turn it back on sometimes you get hit with a load of DRAM errors um, and basically in this video I'm just going to be going over a couple ways or reasons this might happen and some things that we can do to solve it and stop the issue from coming back. Um, so as you can see I'm just giving an overview of the system here. I've got uh, four sticks, a crucial 8 gig, um, 32 gigs in total. Um, as you can see it's running at 2666 which is the stock speeds and uh, not not the uh, rated XMP. Rated XMP speed of this kit is 3200 megahertz but when we try and run it at 3200 it's not stable so I'm just going to show you. Okay so look we've enabled uh, XMP here or DOCP sorry 3200 it's got the timings and the voltage of 1.35. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just uh, power off the system with this um, and show you that 3200 will work um, between restarts and stuff. But just as soon as you unplug the power cord, something happens and the 3200 no longer works. Um, so as you can see, this is just all the timings that it's changing from auto that's applying the XMP profiles and uh, we're just booting up into Windows now. Alright so you can see we're back in Windows loaded in and it is correctly registering at 3200 megahertz 4 out of 4 sticks and now the thing is so the problem that I ran into was that if I just shut the PC down or or I would restart it um, and I wouldn't run into any issues. The PC could boot fine at 3200 and it will look normal. So what you're going to see me do here is quickly restart the PC. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, status LEDs that show on the motherboard because uh, this is where this this is useful for later, as you'll see. But, um, so it will flick between the few lights, uh, yellow means it's checking the RAM, red means it's checking your CPU, white means it's checking the VGA card, and then it goes on to green, which means everything's good, and we're ready for a boot. And as you can see, the PC loads up just fine. So that's what would happen if you just um, were to restart your PC or turn it off normally without unplugging it from the wall, it all seems fine, okay? So, what I'm going to show next is uh, when you actually switch it off fully from the power supply or uh, unplug it from the wall. Alright, so as you can see, it just flip the uh, power switch on the back of the power supply. So that's um, completely no power to the system anymore go ahead and flip it back on after a couple seconds and then look so this is the trouble that I was having is that after I did this and then tried to boot so it would do this power cycle which uh, seemed to be normal for this board anyway it would do this power cycle and then it would just simply get stuck on uh, the DRAM LED which you'll see here so it would do this power cycle maybe once or twice and then it would get stuck on the DRAM light, okay, which is like, you know, we've literally just seen it boot into Windows just fine at 3200. Um, but then again, guys, remember that even though your PC can boot to Windows, it doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, totally stable at uh, whatever frequency and whatever voltage it was running at. So, in this case, uh, what do we have to do? Well, we have to restart the PC. We're probably going to have to clear the CMOS in this case because the DRAM light is completely stuck. 
Um, so what we're going to do is reset the reset the CMOS, and what that will do is remove any BIOS changes we've made. So all those DOCP overclocks we just did, and anything else that you changed, that's going to get reset back to stock settings. Okay. So once we do that, we can diagnose the problem some more. Okay, so I literally just uh, took off the side panel of the case and I'm just shorting out the CMOS pins on the motherboard right now. Uh, so apologies if you can't see it. Um, the camera's not the greatest and it's pretty dark in there, but hey, look up how to clear CMOS if you really have never done it before. Um, but yeah, as you can see, clear the CMOS, uh, flip the power switch back on, and then now we're going to witness the PC, well it's going to do its power training at the start here. It will flip on the CPU, turn off, and then it will turn itself back on. And what it will do here is, because we've just reset our CMOS, it will run through the power LEDs. So it will go DRAM, CPU, and it will flick onto the VGA. And then once it's checked all of those and it thinks that the system is uh, stable to boot, it will go ahead and boot. Let's give it one more check over on the DRAM and the CPU, I guess. Sometimes you just gotta wait for the lights to do their thing. But like, you'll know if it's stuck on something. Okay, and as we can see, after resetting the CMOS, we get the green light. There's power on our monitor. So it's telling us, hey, like, you know, something's changed. Basically, we've reset the CMOS and it's saying, hey, a load of settings have changed. Do you want to go into setup and um, redo your changes? So that's what we're going to go do now. Press F1 to get into setup. All right. So as you can see now, we are back in the BIOS screen. And um, I just wanted to clear something up as well before we proceed that this is the latest version of the BIOS. Um, I strongly recommend before you try and proceed any further than this that you double check that you are definitely running the latest version of the BIOS um, because that could straight out resolve all your problems. Um, for me as I'm on the latest version and I was still having RAM problems this is uh, what I had to do to get the system running uh, with any sort of decent RAM speed. Uh, without using XMP. I'm confident that these issues tend to get fixed over time through BIOS updates. I'm just showing the version here. 2423 for this board was the latest at the time. But yeah, as I said, um, I'm confident that these type of RAM incompatibility issues tend to get fixed with updates over time. Um, Ryzen 3000 and 2000 is notoriously finicky. Uh, with memory so you do have to sometimes you do have to play around with it and just find what works like this is not the first time I've had uh, memory trouble on Ryzen 3000 but this is the first time that I've had this uh, shutdown problem where it won't remember the RAM settings after the shutdown so right let's uh, talk about how to fix this so what we're going to have to do is basically create our own XMP profile um, and for this we're going to have to manually overclock the RAM ourselves. Uh, this is an ASUS BIOS and it's uh, all the settings are under this tab called AI Tweaker. Um, I don't know what your BIOS, uh, the settings are going to be called but they should be pretty much similar. The ones we're looking for are all related to uh, memory frequency and some other specific ones I'll go over in, uh, in, in this section just around here. So what we want to do is this is just setting our overclocking uh, method. So you can either have it on uh, automatic which is just pretty much it's going to do nothing or you can set XMP which is what we were on before, but as we know XMP isn't stable. So what we have to do in this case is uh, we have to set our AI overclock tuner to manual, 
which you're going to see me do here. So there's the ICP, which we know doesn't work, so we have to go on manual. Okay, and this is going to open up some more options. One of those options is memory frequency. So this is the speed of your RAM. So let's say our kit was rated for 3200 megahertz. Um, that's what we we would like to choose here, all right, but we can't because it's not stable yet. So what we need to do is we need to drop it down. We need to drop it down to let's go for 3000 because one 3000 is easily divisible by 2 and it's also a pretty safe speed. The reason that it needs to be easily divisible by 2 is because of this, the FCLK frequency. So it needs to be half of what your memory frequency is. Because DDR stands for double data rate, this effectively gets doubled. So we're going to lock that in at 1500. And uh, as you can see, so the memory frequency is 3000. The FCLK is 1500, which is half of it. All right. The last thing that we need to do is uh, adjust our DRAM voltage. And uh, just a quick point on the DRAM voltage is I'm quite confident that this is one of the reasons or maybe partially uh, the cause of why the system won't uh, post with an XMP profile enabled after uh, complete power loss and it's basically because it's trying to use 1.2 volts and listen I don't know if that's totally accurate I could be chatting complete shit but pretty much I'm not comfortable I'm not confident that it's using 1.35 volts um, or um, not using it effectively when it's running at the full speed um, but anyway what you need to do is dial in your DRAM voltage at 1.35 because this is the standard voltage rate for any XMP profile 0.35 volts. Okay, so we've got our DDR4 3000, we've got 15,000, we've got uh, 1500 megahertz on the FCLK, and we've got our 1.35 volts. Here I'm just showing that I'm leaving the RAM timings all on auto. This is just because um, if you're having trouble with the system, it's best not to mess around with the timings now. You want to get your frequencies stable before attempting to mess with the uh, actual timings of the RAM. So I was just showing there that the timings are available to tune. Like you can go in and just set CAS latency to like 16 or something and leave the rest on auto. That probably will be fine. But I would recommend not doing that until uh, you know that your manual overclock is stable uh, with all auto settings. So now I'm just going to save changes and as you can see that's all we've done. We've just set our frequency to 3000, we've set the FCLK to 1500 and we've set the voltage to 1.35. Okay, That's literally all the changes that we've done and that's our manual XMP profile pretty much created. What I'm going to do now is uh, save configuration, reset, go into Windows. I'll just show you that it will load into Windows, of course, and then we're going to try the complete shutdown method again and see what happens. All right, so we're back in Windows, and as you can see, you're correctly seeing 3000 megahertz. It's registering all four sticks. So now I'm going to power off the system completely, and we're going to see if we have the errors again. So here I'm just going to go ahead, reach behind the PC, shut off the power. You see the GPU light go out, so we know that power, complete power is gone from the system. I'm going to wait a couple seconds, flip it back on, so now we know you've got power back on the system. Now we're expecting to see a power cycle, um, potentially two, but probably at least one, which uh, just seems to be common for this board to power cycle after a power loss. Even without XMP, uh, it would do it anyway. So we're going to hit the power button and uh, just see. So there's our first power cycle. That's expected. And 
now what we're going to do is we should expect, hopefully, to boot straight in. So it's going to check our DRAM, it's going to check our CPU, it's going to check the graphics card. And finally, once it's happy, it's going to accept all of those and it's going to boot us into Windows. So pretty much that is it. Um, if you're having instabilities with your XMP, uh, specifically when uh, taking your power cord out or completely powering off your system, uh, it's pretty much that you need to underclock your RAM slightly because for some reason it just will not play at a certain speed or a certain voltage or you know whatever it is when it's trying to initialize and it just can't do it. Okay, so. Once you've done that as well, I strongly recommend that you run a program called Memtest, and I'm just going to show that now. Alright, so what you're seeing here is just um, Memtest64. This is a program made by the guys at Tech Power Up. Um, and basically, what this does is this will test your PC for um, memory stability to test the, st the stableness of your RAM. And this is really important, especially just because we've gone and set in a manual uh, profile. This is really important because the XMP ones are usually tested uh, fairly extensively, so you know they're going to be okay. If you're ever doing a manual one though, it's like highly recommended that you load up some kind of memtest. There's also memtest86, which runs directly off a of USB. I just use uh, Tech Power Ups. 64-bit version uh, it's just quick and easy to use inside an OS basically what we want is we don't want any errors whatsoever because the RAM is holding important data and moving around important data uh, we don't want any errors whatsoever so run memtest make sure there's no errors and if it passes you should be good to go all right uh, so that's how you fix uh, faulty DRAM after post